windy today. Good. Storms coming. Yeah, rain blowing in. Had to pick up my plants and move them inside because they're a little delicate, so I didn't want to have the wind blow them over and kind of smash them up, you know, and mess them up. But when I look at the clouds, you know, and I see the rain, I check the weather report, you know, because once I look at the clouds, I realize, hey, you know what, something's up. So then I look at the weather report, and they say, storm coming. So I go, okay, well, you know, I need to get my umbrella out and need to make some preparations. Need to get some things together. Because it looks like a storm to me and the wind's blowing. When I read the weather report, they said that there was snow up in the mountains, you know. Usually when there's snow in the mountains, that kind of means that things down here in the valley get a little cold. I made my preparations. I got things together. You know, I kind of took my plants inside, kind of set them aside, gave them some water, you know, made sure that they're all kind of like you know, set up so I could bring them back out. But when I look at a storm like that, I could do one of two things. I could either get all dressed up, you know, put on my rain gear, put on my clothes, put on my gloves and my, my waterproof boots. I can go out and work in it, you know, and do the things that I need to do in the storm. But I, I got to put on all that clothing, you know, to keep myself dry, you know, so that way I don't get all wet. I don't put on too many clothes so I don't get so hot that I sweat. You know, I got to work it. You know, I got to do the things that a storm requires when I have to work in it. I don't know about you. Looking at that storm, I kind of like sitting on this porch. Because you see, I got a roof over my head. I got walls that block part of the wind. I can look back and kind of sit here with you. you know, let, me, let me take a gander with you. Let me sit on your side and check it out. Yeah, looks like a storm. You know, you and I, we could go out in the storm, you know, and conquer the, the nature and fight the battles. And if somebody called, you know, of course we'd get up and go help them. But if you don't have to, and God hasn't told you to, then isn't it kind of nice to just be able to sit back and watch the storm? I mean, I don't know about you, but I kind of get a kick out of it. I like hearing the rain fall, you know, and it hits the roof and it bounces, and you hear the, you know, or the, or the, you know, the sounds of rain hitting the roof. Of course, when you hear sirens too, you kind of realize that sometimes people aren't prepared for the storm, and they crash into things and they smash up. And if you live in the city, you know what I'm talking about. It's like in Anchorage, I remember, first snowfall, everybody lives in the snow, but guess what? The first snowfall, there's over a thousand fender benders, you know, because nobody reports them. But they smack in each other and bounce off <laughs> every time because it's like the tar comes up out of the asphalt, you know, and kind of makes it slick. All the oils and everything's been dropped on the pavement because of or the asphalt because of the cars you know they all leak and tires come apart and all kinds of things are on the road that you don't really know until you know, God washes it off and goes down in the ocean kills everything that's living <laughs> but you know the first storm brings all that up to the surface and you know once your car hits it pew, man you're sliding all over even though you know how to drive but, you know I was sitting here thinking about that storm you know and I read about some things in my devotional, you know, today, and I really appreciate God giving me insights, you know, it's not like a full-fledged Bible study, but he gives me insights into something that he wants me to focus in on, to zero in on, you know, because a Bible study, it's nice, you know, I mean, you get a 
whole big long teaching, you know, and you get this dissertation about this, that, and the other thing, and you hit your top ten lists of what things you ought to do and how you should apply it and where you should go and what you should do and what it means and how this goes and you know, that prepackaged kind of thing, you know, that most Bible teachers do, you know, they put it into a box and they have to have the personal story plus the personal application and then the historical setting and then the background and then how this worked and how that worked and what it works and how it's going to work and what it'll do for you. All wrapped up in the one. I don't know about you, but I got the attention span of a six-year-old because I'm an adult. So, you know, if it ain't done in two minutes, man, that's over with. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, those Bible studies, I know most of the people. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this. The one thing I learned about Bible studies, you know, because I was talking to a friend the other night about Bible studies. One thing I learned about Bible studies, most people walk out of Bible study, they haven't a clue what just got said. They really don't. Ninety percent of the people that walk out of the Bible study don't remember what it was they just studied. They write it down. I mean, I even used to go to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. You know, we had a lot of people, man. Afterwards, go over, you know, and go have coffee down the street, you know, over on Flower. Well, not Flower. Well, well where was that place? Now I think about it. Uh, wasn't it Rain Cross Square? Wasn't it the mall? Oh, well. Some place over there. We used to go, you know, and... For the longest time, the waitresses there used to complain because Christians never tipped and they'd always give like this cheap tip, you know, like 10% or something. And finally, Romaine had to say something and said, look, the woman's putting up with you guys. You ought to pay her, you know. <laughs> so all of a sudden, man, she's making money. Or all of them, you know, the waitresses. But, you know, I, I know because I went over, you know, after after church things, you know, and everybody's talking about football and this, that, and the other thing. They ain't talking about Jesus, but, you know, talking about everything else, but... They never talked about the Bible study, and I'd ask people, you know, just casually, I'd say, well, let's get out of study today. Well, you know, Chuck talks slow, you know. You say, that's what you got out of the Bible study? Chuck talking? Huh. Or, you know, it was kind of like this, and they start to say something, and you go, interesting. Because I remember it all, man. I'd go like, start from the beginning and work my way through it and talk all the way to dissertation about it and explain how his application of it was according to this scripture and how it worked towards this example that he was using in life and nature in order to make it applicable to the word of God and how God had revealed it to him in such a way that it could be manifested that the story of what he was relating from the scripture also applies to today in our lives as we go about our life because this is the way that it applies. And I was like, yeah, it made a perfect picture of me, you know, like I just loved it. I was like, oh yeah, I got that one, okay, you know, like the flies, you know, in the dark and how they fly, you know, they can't see, you know, and they attach themselves to the ceiling, you know. I mean, all these different little quibs and quotes that Chuck would use, you know. I remember. But you see, those were, if they were Sunday morning, a half hour, and we know that adults can't pay attention for a half hour. Or if it's Sunday night, you know, sometimes I'd go for two hours, you know. Ain't no way anybody can remember all that stuff in two hours. And, oh, they take notes. And they say, well, wait a minute, let me check my notes. And then, you know, you kind of wait and see. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see. You got it. <laughs> but you know what? If they were doing Bible studies like they were looking at that storm, you know, come on, let's look at the storm again. Can you see the clouds? You can see the clouds, right? Yeah. Matter of fact, you can hear a lawnmower coming, so this ought to be interesting. But you can see the clouds, so you know rain's coming, so you go, as surely as the rain falls, you know, so too, when there's a storm in life, you got to be prepared. you got to get ready, because that storm is going to rain on you. It will rain on your parade. Now, that's an analogy of what Jesus said in Matthew 24 when he's talking about, you know, you can see the weather, and you know that if it's cloudy, it's going to rain, or you see it's sunny, it's going to shine. Why can't you discern the signs of the times? You know, in other words, he made it real and it applied, but it was short. I don't know why we have to get real long about the Bible studies, you know, because frankly, I know that by now you've already quit paying attention to me. <laughs> so today's devotional, I was really amazed because. It was kind of like 
It started off with something that I know no Christian does. But they all tell each other to do it because it's not really a Western concept. In the West, we don't want to do this first line. We want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, as fast as we can, as quick as we can, get it over with, get it done so we can move on and get over to something else and do something else instead. And it says, wait before me, gently breathing in my spirit. You know, there ain't no Christian in the world that's going to sit and wait. Unless they're in Alaska, and then it's only in the winter, because you can't go anywhere anyway. Did or sat and Forgot it. God's done that to me at times. Man, I used to take people everywhere. You know, I'd have to go take them to some place and sit with them. And I would sit for hours, and I would tell myself, Lord, I'm practicing patience so that I can wait on you. And Lord applied it, you know, and I learned how to be patient. You know, I, I'm very, my wife says I'm very impatient now because, you know, she starts talking about George and Fred and Tom and Dick and Harry, and I'm like, eh, I'm gone, you know, I don't, not interested. We're talking about Jesus, I'm like, really? What? Got my attention? So you see, sometimes it's a matter of whether you're really interested or you're just putting on a show in order to know look like Now God's kind of funny that way. He'll send the wind. He'll send the rain. He'll send the storms. He'll send all these things to get your attention. But he doesn't say, look, I want your attention because of all these things happening. He says, now I'll speak to you still small voice. Because you see, it's not about end times that he really wants you to get all excited about. He wants you to get excited about hearing him speak. That's the point of why we study in time. It's not about the world and its ways, because the world is going down. It's about us and our day going up. So you see, you can either go down or you can go up. The choice is yours. It's all in what you're paying attention to. Are you looking at the signs, the clouds, the rain, the storm? the noise, or are you listening to my voice speaking to you? In other words, have you heard what God has to say today? And that's why we have functions to inspire us to listen, to look, and to speak the word of God so that we can hear Him Today, as he said, today you can hear his voice, hearts not your heart, as he said in front of you. So that's why we have emotions. That spirit, the spirit of God, which I have given free entrance, if he has given free entrance into your life, and not barred out by self or selfish desire, will enable you to do the same works I did, which being interpreted is, will enable me to do the same works that even greater than I did than on earth through you. You see, the Spirit of God wants to come in you so that you can learn not to be distracted. You could be attracted by the Word of God being spoken to you and you hearing it, causing your heart to burn with passion that you go, Oh, I want that. i got to have that. Give me that, give me that, give me, give me, give me that. And so, no matter what it is, whether the storms of life, the wind blowing, the noise, the lawnmowers, or just your life being all wrapped up in looking, 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 instead of stopping and waiting on the Lord, you miss out on what the Spirit of God is trying to tell you today. Because God wants His Spirit to lead you this day. Because it's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by guns. Sorry. I know you have that amendment. It's not by your wisdom, it's not by your intelligence, it's not by your faith, it's not by your actions, it's not by all these other things. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So, 
whenever I see the wind blowing and I always know that a storm's coming, I kind of look at which one do I want to pay attention to? The clouds that are raining or the wind that's blowing? Because you see, I can't see the wind. The wind blows with or will you need to know where it's coming from or where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. But I can see the storm and I know where it's going. And I know what it's going to do. But the wind I never really know. you wanted in your heart. Because you see, God uses everything in your life. If, and it's a big if, big if, are you ready? Are you listening? Paying attention? No distractions, no wind, no storm, no rain, no hail, no lightning, no cyclone, no tornado, no lawnmower. Are you listening? If you let him he will use everything in your life. But if you don't, everything in your life will be just like that storm. It will force you into some kind of action. Or by the Spirit of God, you could wait, kick back, and watch God in action. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> 